lot of people that are struggling right now. There's a lot of people that are going through difficult situations, going through difficult problems. And really they're saying, I'm in a delay, but my breakthrough's not here. Uh, I, I need a breakthrough, but I, I'm not getting through. Uh, they're, they, they're saying things like, you know, uh, I don't know what to do next, God. What, what, what should I be doing? How can I proceed? How can I get into uh, all that you've got for me and yet there's so many enemies, there's so many uh, things that are being stopped, so many blockages, so many problems in this land, so many difficult people, so many people that are oppressing me, so many people that are, are uh, coming against me and against the nation and against the church and against this and, and the list is endless um, and really I understand that. I understand that we are going through some difficult times and some of us are about to go through into a breakthrough. So what do you do when you're waiting uh, to get out of a delay? What do, you, what do you do when you're waiting to overcome a delay? What do you do when you no longer want to be delayed? Well, you get busy. And that's what uh, Gideon did. He got busy. And, uh, you know, <laughs> there's this thing going around really in church circles in, in familiar places is people want, want a position people want to um, make a difference people people want to feel valued people want to uh, just be successful and I understand all those things and God does too and so I don't know what is frustrating you at this time I don't know what is frustrating you in this season but can I encourage you that if you get diligent, God will, uh, will step into your circumstances, will make a difference. And so let's study this word together. Let's have a look at some of these verses and see uh, how maybe this story could uh, prophetically uh, apply to your life could make a difference so glory to God here we are we're, we're in Judges 6 and we're looking at this uh, encounter that Gideon uh, is having now Gideon um, were, was a, a simple son but he had a heart he had a purpose uh, and he had a determination that will get you noticed and Gideon he, he was busy in secret he was busy without a platform. He was busy without a promotion. He was busy without a position. This is the truth of Gideon. Gideon uh, was a, a resourceful man. He looked for what was needed to be done and he figured out ways to do it when it, it was impossible. You see, the Midianites were crushing, they were invading, they were uh, taxing, they were stealing uh, the blessings, the fruit, if you like, of uh, of Israel. And as they got into a place of more and more oppression, Gideon got resourceful. And so, one of the keys to your breakthrough, one of the keys to getting further along in your life and to overcome the enemy, is to think resourcefully you know if you're looking at the size of the enemy if you're looking at the, the the how big the invading army is against you if you're looking how the, uh, your past fathers haven't stood up to the problems and now you're in a situation because your family has done these things to you if you're in that kind of place then you need to start thinking a little bit differently you need to start thinking how can I make a difference um, and Gideon, let's face it, Gideon was in survival mode. He was in, I, I need to do something to survive. Uh, I, he wasn't talking about thriving. He wasn't talking about making uh, a huge impact in Israel. He was talking about providing for his family, providing for himself and just making it day by day. You might be in a situation where you feel that you're just making it that you're, you're just getting by. Can I tell you, you're in the place where God can notice you because you're determined to continue, you're determined to press in, you're to, determined to step up and help your family in the best way you can. And don't get me wrong, Gideon's life was not easy. 
He had to do this in secret. He had to go and hide um, what he was doing. Uh, 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 you know, but he, he, he wasn't about, look at me, I'm providing for my family. Look at me, I'm doing this for the, the temple and the synagogue. Look at me, I'm, I'm making a difference in the community. He was, I'm doing what I have to do to survive. Uh, and can you be encouraged? Because in those situations, God's going to show up. In those situations, God's going to make a difference in your life. Um, but if you're doing nothing, you're, you're not going to see the breakthrough. See, Gideon's father was also in the same situation. Gideon's brothers and family and all those that were related to them and even the workers and, uh, and Gideon's friends, they were all in the same situation. But Gideon was doing something different. He was pressing in. He had a purpose. You need to find your purpose. You need to find your purpose. Your purpose is what burns in your heart. Now, don't get me wrong, the heart of man is desperately wicked. Uh, the heart of man is desperately wicked. They're desperately uh, apart from God. But the Word of God says when you get saved, Jesus says, I'll put a new heart in you. I'll put a new heart in you. So you don't have a desperately wicked heart when you submit to Christ and you walk with him. This is a key to understanding that who you are in Christ is not dictated by your circumstances. It's dictated by your heart. Your heart for Christ and Christ's new heart in you is going to make a huge difference. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so Gideon was in the same situation as everyone else, but Gideon was doing something that got him noticed by God. He didn't go and ask for permission, I don't believe. He didn't go and uh, say, oh, pastor, pastor, or uh, rabbi, rabbi, you know, I want to do this and I want to do that. He didn't. There was, there was none of that. He had initiative. He saw the need and he stepped up to meet the need. He didn't go around asking to do this, asking to do that. He saw the need and he stepped up to the need. You see, who are you trying to impress? Are you trying to impress people? Are you trying to impress the leadership? Or you just really just want to do the right thing before God? Doing the right thing before God will get you noticed by God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And so as Gideon threshed this wheat in that wine press, the wine press is a, is a place of crushing. It's a pra place of pouring out under pressure. He went into that place of pressure. He went into that place to make a difference. In, in, and he didn't go in there to crush grapes. He went in there to thresh wheat. You see, when you're a prophetic person, and we're all prophetic people, um, not pathetic, but prophetic, if you listen to the voice of God, you're a prophet. You might not have the office of a prophet, that's a different matter, but we all can hear the voice of God through the Word of God, through me preaching and others preaching and teaching. Uh, you can hear the voice of God. So we're all prophetic people. And when you're prophetic people, you do things differently. See, his friends down the road who also had a vineyard, they would have been crushing grapes in that vineyard. They would have been, in their wine press, they would have been making the wine. But the enemy, the Midianites, would have been stealing that wine. They, they would have been stealing the wheat. But Gideon came in, and with his prophetic heart, he said, there's a need here, and I can see something that can do this in a different way. The prophetic in you is desiring you to make a difference that the world can't see yet. You might be the first to do it. That's a scary thing to do, isn't it? You know, there might be nobody else in your town or in your city or even in your nation that is doing what you're doing because God's put a new heart in you. God's given you a thought process and he's given you a skill set 
and if you're not using it, you're going to miss your breakthrough. You're just going to be like everyone else. Everyone else is stuck in a rut because the enemy is too big. But Gideon was an overcomer, just like you are. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So when you do things differently, you might get people say, no, don't do that. Don't do that. You're going to fail. You're going to cause more trouble. You're going to bring harm on us all. Don't, don't, don't step out. Don't, don't make a difference in that way. Don't, don't do that. And they're speaking from their fear. Not from your heart. You know, a lot of uh, churches have leadership. A lot of churches have um, pastoral committees that, you know, want to govern their people. Uh, and they control. It's a spirit of control. And in some churches, they'll, they'll, they won't do anything unless the leadership, the elder or the pastor or whoever tells them, the priest tells them they can do these things. You know, uh, the, the Catholic Church is an example. I'm not beating anybody up in, per, in particular. So I've got complaints about everyone, including myself. But the Catholic Church says you can't do these things. You, you can't take communion, what they call mass, without the priest's authority, without the priest doing it. I mean, how ludicrous. If you're a child of God, you're free. You're not under condemnation. You're not under control you are under the spirit of god and you should step into what god's got for you which is fellowship with christ fellowship with it but you see the controlling spirit wants to control every aspect of your life and that's just one example there's many others many other evangelical charismatic churches where you know they 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 treat the pastor or the prophet or the leader the the apostle as some sort of uh, icon, an oracle that only God can speak through. But can I tell you, if you have a heart uh, and you, you have a passion to overcome what's against you, you'll find a way. And so I'm not here to speak rebellion. I'm not here to say rebel against your leaders, rebel against those that are in authority over you. The word of God is very clear about that. But what I'm saying is, when nobody else is stepping up to bring the gospel, when nobody else is stepping up to bring bread to the children, I'm talking of spiritual bread, then you must. It's your responsibility to share the word of God, the bread of life. Hallelujah. And that's what Gideon was doing. He was preparing this wheat to create bread, to feed people. And spiritually or prophetically speaking, that word, that bread, brings uh, spiritual life. Our purpose is to press out and to share and to prepare the word of God. You, you might not be called to be uh, a prophet. You might not be called to be a pastor or a teacher. You might not be called to be those things, but you are called to provide bread to those who are hungry. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, there's a process involved. Gideon was a part of the process. You know, there was somebody who was gathering the wheat. There's somebody who was cutting that wheat down. There's somebody that prior to that who was planting it. There's somebody prior to that who was uh, sowing those seeds into the ground. But somehow in this process, we don't know how many people were involved, but we know Gideon was taking this uh, this wheat and he was threshing it. In other words, he was separating it to get the the, the stuff that would eventually become flour. I'm not technical, I'm not a farmer, I don't know these exact details, I'll be honest with you, but there was a process, there was a harvest, and Gideon was preparing the harvest. That's the second point. You have to believe that what you're doing is going to bring a harvest. Otherwise, what's the point in doing it? You have to believe that when you go into your day job, when you go into your place of work, that you're going to get a paycheck. Otherwise, why would you go? You have to believe that there's a purpose in the kingdom for you to be doing something. It's called a reward. Otherwise, why are you doing it? You know, do you think I'm sitting here because, you know, I like to sit here in front of a camera? I know Margaret doesn't. I know Becky doesn't. Um, I don't mind. I'm getting used to it. But you know what? 
we're not here just to entertain. We're here to bring life and the words of God into people's lives. And do I do it for free? No, I do not do it for free. Do many of us do it for free? Yeah, of course we do because we have a heart to give. But you know what? I'm working for a heavenly reward. Some people are higher hirelings, the Bible says, and they have an earthly reward. And they're not concerned about their spiritual reward. But I believe a spiritual reward is available to those that want to work in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So Gideon was doing this thing in secret. And then suddenly we read in verse 12, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Oh, yeah, I'm going to stop there and pause and, and just change the theme slightly. I'm going to suggest this. You know, when the devil's involved, uh, the devil will bring you delays. The devil will bring you disasters. Notice they all begin with the letter D. That when the devil, with a capital D or a lowercase D, however you want to put it, that begins a letter, a word, D, delays, the devil, disappointments, the devil, doubts, the devil. You get where I'm going with this? What good does God say? You mighty man of valor. Valor is the letter V. It brings victory. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. So valor, when he's saying you're a mighty man of valor, he's saying you're a mighty man of victory. You're victorious already. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So first of all, the Lord sees you as you are, not as the world sees you, not even as you, you see yourself. You know, I had a thought, and I was going to tweet it out yesterday, but you know what? I was busy, and I didn't get to it. Um, but the thought was this. The devil is not our biggest problem. Ourselves is the biggest problem. Your biggest problem is not your enemy. Your biggest problem is yourself. Your biggest problem is your flesh. Your biggest problem is your thinking. This is your biggest problem. When you get over how others see you, you, you won't care what others think about you. And you certainly won't care what the devil's doing. Oh, I love it, you know, that story. And it, it, does, it does the circuit, but I don't mind using it as well. Smith Wigglesworth, you know, he was woke up in the middle of the night and there's a manifestation of the devil at the end of his bed. And he, he wakes up and he's obviously getting disturbed by this manifestation and he looks and, and he sees this devil this demon manifested at the end of his bed coming to kill him to steal and destroy his life and he looks at him and he goes oh it's only you and he turns over pulls the cover back up and goes back to sleep you see the devil is not your problem you are and your response to the problems of the world and the spiritual problems. You have a choice to ignore the devil and press on for your purpose. But I tell you, if you press in for your purpose, God's going to show up. I'm speaking to somebody today. I feel it in the spirit right now. I feel it moving right now. Somebody's receiving this word. I don't know whether you're in this room, in this audience, or whether you're on the other side of this camera. But I know that somebody's receiving this message. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. There it goes. Somebody's really getting it in the rooted in their spirit that they've their thinking has been their problem. Their perception of who their enemy has been their problem. You see, Gideon knew he had an enemy. That's why he was hiding away in doing things in secret. You know? Sometimes a little bit of wisdom is required. But he didn't shy away just because he had an enemy. He still stepped up. And so this angel of the Lord, I love this angel of the Lord, this messenger of God appears to him. First of all, he's in secret. He's hiding away. And then this person, a messenger of God, appears. He's like, oh, 
it's like he just walked through the door, through the through the doorway. I don't know where this situation was, whether it was inside of some sort of barn or a building. There's somewhere out of sight, but somehow this messenger of God, this angel of God, angel sent by God, who appeared in a form that was human to Gideon, steps into that secret place and reveals himself and declares a word. Can I tell you, some of you are looking for an angel encounter. If you get charismatic enough or Pentecostal enough, you're going to be, oh, I saw this angel. I wanted to invite that angel. I saw this, and it was the angel of this and the angel of that. And you know what? Just shut up a minute. Shut up. Get rid of all that stupid thinking. Just get busy serving God and serving people. And if an angel shows up, you won't even recognize the angel. They'll look like somebody else. They'll look like a person. You know, we, we want to spiritualize everything. We want to make everything. I'm more spiritual than you, brother, because I had an encounter with Jesus. I'm more spiritual than you because I went to heaven. Give me a break. Seriously. Are you busy with the gospel, providing the bread of heaven to the people that need to be healed, to be fed? Now, some of those encounters are genuine. They're not all bad. But if we're searching for the angels in the room, we might miss what God sends. I love it in the New Testament where they say, they said, you know, it's. Um, yeah, yeah, there might be an angel in the meeting. Uh, well, you know, one of you might be angelic here today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, but I ain't going to spiritualize it because, you know. But when you speak as a messenger of God, you, you speak into people's lives. And so this messenger from the Lord, he comes in and he says, the Lord is with you. One encouragement. But you know what? Gideon didn't believe it. There's a lot of people speaking into your life that God sends into your life and they say things that you don't believe because you're not in the place to receive. You've been working hard. You're tired. You feel defeated. You feel down and depressed. But can I tell you, there's people coming into your life who are going to start speaking into your life that you have a value. You, the Lord is with you and he, you've got a purpose. In fact, the things that God's got for you are going to increase. You've been storing things up in jars, in, 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 in places. You know, I'll, I'll save that. I might have a use for it. I'm going to tell you that the Lord says he's going to increase your storehouse. He's going to increase because he's preparing you for a season of famine. He's preparing you to, uh, of a, for a season of famine to be a provider. Hallelujah. Receive that. <laughs> you know, you might not believe it, you might not understand it, but there's a word from the Lord to somebody in the audience. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, people are going to come into your life and you're not going to recognize them for who they are. You're not going to recognize that they've been sent by God, but they're going to speak a word into your life that is not going to be believable. But it doesn't mean to say it's not God. Hallelujah. 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 So here we are. He says, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. In other words, you're, you're a victor. You're, a, you're an overcomer. You're a warrior. Not a warrior, but a warrior. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, there he is, Gideon's hiding away, doing his bit, miserable as sin probably, not happy about the circumstances, hates the country he lives in, hates the village he belongs to, dislikes his family. I reckon this is Gideon. That might be wrong. And, I, you know, I don't mind being wrong, but that's my impression of Gideon. Gideon was a loner. 
Gideon was alone in that business. He wasn't going out with a team. At this point, the team came. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So anyway, so here he is. The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Can I tell you, if God's with you, and, and trust me on this one, God is with you. Are you going to believe it? Maybe not. Are you going to receive what I'm saying, that God is with you? I do hope so. But you see, my job is to preach the word. It's your job to respond. My job is to deliver what the Lord is saying. But it's your job to respond. And not everyone's in the right place for even the right word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord God is with us, then why has this happened to us? There he was having his pity parlour. There he was saying, Oh, woe is to me. Oh dear. You don't know what it's like, Pastor. You have no idea what I'm going through. I feel unwell. I, I feel that like everything's against me. My computers, my live stream isn't working. My camera's looking the wrong way. My cameraman's not talking to me. He's, he's, he's doing this. Oh, it's so bad in this place. You know, you could say all these things because they're true. Oh, well, maybe a little bit. Your cameraman's pretty good, isn't he? Yeah. Got to keep on the right side of him. <laughs> but, you know, we can moan about our situation, but it isn't going to change it. Gideon doesn't, didn't just moan. He still did something. Can I drop that into your spirit again? We can sit with our friends and moan about everything that's going on in our lives that we're not happy with, that's not going well. And you know what? It's not going to change anything. What's going to change is you starting to hear the word of God whilst you're busy doing what God is doing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so he said here, why has this all happened to us? And where are all his, the Lord's, miracles, which our fathers told us about? Where, where's the God of our ancestors? Where's the God that moved revival in this land? Where's the God uh, that moved miracles? Well, God didn't move. Did he? That same God is in this land today. Looking for somebody to hear. Looking for somebody to obey. Looking for somebody who's already making a difference. Not somebody, one day I'm going to be a preacher. One day I'm, I'm going to share the gospel with the world. One day I'm going to be famous. And one day, one day, and we always talk about one day. Well, what are you doing today? What are you doing today? But, but you don't know, Pastor, how difficult it is. What are you doing today? I don't need to know how difficult it is. I've got my own set of problems. God already knows how difficult it is. But are you going to carry on complaining that it's your father's problem, that it's your family problem, that it's your history problem? God did things in the past and... You know, God doesn't do those things today. Well, that's cessationalism. Cesse not sensationalism, cessationalism. It's, it's ceasing. God doesn't do those things anymore. The, we have the Bible complete. We don't need any miracles now. You need a miracle. You need to kick up the backside if you think that's true. You need a miracle in your life if you think God's not working. God's working, but you are in the place. Because you're too busy talking about the past and not looking what God's doing in the present. 
Oh, but one day God's going to show up. I believe that. One day God's going to heal me. I believe that. Today is your day if you'll hear what the voice of the Lord is saying. Today is your day of a miracle breakthrough. I am a messenger from God. Big word. Big title. But if you're hearing what I'm saying to you, then that is true. God has sent me into your life. You may have stumbled across this broadcast by accident and praise God for stumbling across by accident. But can I tell you, God is using me to bring a message to you. Are you going to hear it? Are you going to look at me? Did I come as anything special? No. Did this angel come in a glory cloud or with a bright shining appearance? No. We don't read that. Gideon, oh, well, if God's working, then where is God? That was Gideon's attitude. Maybe that's your attitude. But glory to God. God has got broad shoulders and God can take it. And God is still doing something. You see, <laughs> I've got to tell you something. Israel, the land of Israel was in a mess because they turned their back on God. So the God that brought them out of Egypt, they turned their back on that God, our God. Have you turned your back on God? God has not turned his back on you. But God is allowing circumstances in your life to bring you back into a victory. Hallelujah. So whilst we're being sorrowful for the condition we're in, whilst we're being miserable about what's happening, God is working a miracle in your life and my life to set us up for success glory to god so but now the lord has forsaken us he says oh doesn't he drone on and delivered us into the hands of the midnights oh doesn't he get depressing then then the lord it says turned to gideon and said Go in this might of yours and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midnights. Have I not sent you? You see, the Lord is not interested in listening to your complaints. The Lord is not interested in listening to you to complain. God, you did this miracle for that person. You did this miracle in the past. God's not interested in hearing that nonsense out of your mouth when he's called you to be so much bigger than the problem. He's called you to be a powerful person of God, to make a difference in your life and in the lives of your family, in the lives of of the church in the lives of the land god's called you to be a deliverer of people hallelujah glory to god thank you jesus can i tell you that god has called you but not only called you he's also sent you he says have i not sent you he sent me to crew. Thank you, Jesus. He sent me here to this amazing people. He sent me here to make a difference in a place that needs a difference. But, you know, when I look at all the problems and I look at all the things, I sound like Gideon. Oh, Lord, crew's so depressing. Oh, Lord. What did you do in the past? That I, what did I, my fathers do in the past that do, I deserve this in the present? You know, that type of woe unto me. But you know what? God sent me. So I'm going to make a difference. And so should you. God has sent you. Man and woman of God, God has sent you to make a difference. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to come to our end of our program in a moment. But I really want this word to sink into your heart today. That yes, circumstances are difficult. Yes, there is hardship ahead. Yes, there is battles that are bigger than you, that are in the future. But God has called you to be victorious. 
not in the past, but in the present. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Are you going to be in that place to say, I might feel hidden at the moment. I might feel that our pastor hasn't put me on camera yet. I'm on the other side. I'm in the audience and I, I want to be in another place. You might be saying that to yourself right now. So what are you going to do whilst you're sitting on the other side of the camera? What, 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 what are you going to ask the Lord to show you that you could do differently to get God to notice you? You see, you have a purpose and, and a call on your life that God's placed in you. And God wants to use you mightily. Hallelujah. There's a, a story in the, in the Word about the widow with the oil. And the Lord just showed me a picture. Uh, prepare to receive more from God coming days. Mm, thank you, Jesus. I can see it. I see it filling up right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You, you, you have an overflow and an abundance that's going to come that you never expected. And it's going to be like honey on your lips as you speak of it. And it's going to be a, 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 new, a new experience, a deeper experience, a, a bottomless well, of, if you like. Um, and it's going to come out of you in, in a powerful way. Um, oh, hallelujah. I'm just getting the picture of King David and the horn being poured out of oil on, over his head. You know, that vessel was, a, the oil was carried in a horn, you know, they kept off the end and they, because that was a great vessel, but it's not just a little drop. You know, we put a little drop of people because we don't want to get a, a cleaner's bill for their, you know, their oil and their clothes. But you know what? The, there's, that horn is, is being poured out. Uh, and you, you are the vessel that is increasing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Now, if you're watching and you're, uh, you're desperate for a word, the word is this, the Lord has sent you. Go and make a difference. The Lord has put a new heart in you that is powerful with purpose and with passion. You know, it doesn't matter if people don't see it. It doesn't matter if you're working hidden things right now. The fact of the matter is God sees it all. Recognize that God's sending people into your life to speak, even though you can't accept what they're saying. It doesn't mean to say God's not trying to get through to you. So maybe you've listened to my words this morning and you think, that's not, that's not a word for me. I don't agree with you. Well, you know what? Gideon didn't agree with the messages sent from the Lord either, but it didn't make it any less true. Yes, the circumstances you're going through are big. Yes, they're painful. Yes, they're, they're, they're deep wounds that you're dealing with. Yes, I get that. But you know what? My God is going to use you. Yes, you. The hurt, the broken, the despised, the forgotten, the hidden. God's going to use that type of person that is busy, not serving themselves, but serving others. Hallelujah. And if that's you, I want to speak this word. I want to speak this word into you right now. The Lord is with you, O oh, mighty person of valor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray for you right now. If you're needing healing and uh, you've got an ache or a pain in your body, you've got somebody with an eyesight issue right now, and so I just want to pray for you. I believe God will heal you if you believe it. And so right now, that pain in somebody's ankle, I just command it to go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. There's somebody with a sh sore shoulder, and I just say, come out. Pain, come out. Spirit of infirmity, come out right now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. That person with eyesight issue right now. I say, your eyes be corrected right now in Jesus' name. There it goes. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's receiving that. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, there it goes. Mm. There's somebody with a, a crooked spine, and I'm just going to speak that. Uh, to be the right shape, the right S curve, as we call it right now. So if your spine it, it, it got back ache and, and spine problem right now, I just speak to that spine and I say, come into alignment. The legs grow out, hips rotate right now. Shoulders come into alignment right now. Neck lengthen right now. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. If you don't know Jesus, I want to encourage you to accept Jesus today. I want you to give your heart and your life to God because without God in your life, you're lost. Without a relationship with Jesus, there is no way into heaven. And so God made a way through his Son, our Savior, our Lord and our God, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And so I want to say to you, if you've never, ever trusted Jesus with your life, now's the time to do it. It's so simple. God has not made it complicated. God's done all the work for you, but you have to say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, come into my heart. I believe you. I believe the words that the pastor has spoken today. Oh, hallelujah. And I believe somebody's going to receive that word in Jesus' name mighty name hallelujah thank you jesus if you've received christ during this broadcast i invite you to contact us e-church.tv connect with us on the website there and let us know or send in a comment on the on the video and we'll hopefully pick them up and be able to see that we can pray with you and we can help you glory to god thank you jesus so we're coming to the end of our program and uh, I just want to say thank you for watching.